last time I came to Six Flags Great Escape, they were closed. I came here late into the afternoon hoping to get on Bobcat, their new for 2024 Gravity Group wooden coaster that replaced Alpine Bobsled only last year, or that closed last year that we were able to cover on the channel. But now we're back and there's a two punch because despite it being closed in inclement weather last time, we are open and it's the haunt event as we're here in late September. So let's go for Fright Fest and Great Escape and Bobcat. We're gonna cover them all in three short hours here at the park. I'm not sure what the maze filming policy is in this park, but we're gonna go through the mazes. And we'll give you for a review, or give you a review, of course, once they're all done. We have arrived just in time for the awakening and the start of the Fright Fest events. over here watching the monsters come out. Why don't we go to a new ride, get that out of the way, and then we'll come back into the haunt area for Fright Fest. We are in the Bobcat you. I have no idea how long it is, but considering this trip I've had, actually this year, I haven't had much luck with coasters, especially new ones, operating by the time I get to the station platform. We're not taking any risks. All right, it's on a two train service, so we should be pretty good here. Bobcat is a walk-on. Alpine bobsled certainly wasn't like that ever at any point that I encountered it. of this ride, or at least homage to the old Alpine bobsled, which I was lucky enough to get on before it was too late last year, is the original entrance and one of the cars for the bobsled itself, a rare Intamin bobsled that's still here to check out in case you're curious. And really more interactive if you wanted to actually get inside and have a seat. That did work out perfectly as I was able to go straight on in the back seat. I'll give my review later of Bobcat as I come back for another ride. But for now we're gonna go to the back recesses of the park because everyone kind of... Well that's disturbing.
three years, it's going to be a hundred year anniversary of the Comet, one of the most famous roller coasters in the world. Maybe not in its current shape, but uh, yeah, definitely still one of the most legendary wood coasters out there and for good reason. I wouldn't say that the layout these days really blows my mind as it certainly uh, is a bit sort of, you know, there's a lot of out and back coasters or double out and back coasters out there. But this one with the speed that it takes throughout, it's really top class. Uh, oddly enough, I don't really rate it as highly as some, but for what it is and its piece in history, it is definitely legendary alone for that. Uh, great two rides on it. I'm gonna come back and do a night ride at the end of the night, but it's time, I think, to go to some haunts. So we're on this side of the park. There's four haunts in total, and two houses are, bo are booked together. So basically, you're gonna go to one section and get two houses, and another section of the park where there are another two houses. I'd like to wait until it's nightfall, but I don't want to waste time at the park and make sure that I get enough coverage of the event for you guys. So hang on, we're off to some hunts. Distinguished gentleman, hello. Ah, he doesn't want us to be here. He's looking for company. Ah, we saw this moose creature earlier. Ah, he might have what followed us. At? Followed us from Vermont. Oh, oh yeah. Vermonters! Ah. <laughs> Welcome to New York. This is how we do it in the Adirondacks. <laughs> this Adirondack monster. <laughs> Just so we can say we did two day rides, or somewhat day-ish, we're gonna go on Bobcat again as I'm guessing that the queue is a little short. I'm guessing, of course, but we'll see. It is on a two train service, luckily. And then we'll go to the houses. Okay, we are at the back of the park in the Raging River raft ride section that is bone dry, which would make sense for this time of year. But we're off to two of the houses. Looks like we have an impromptu barbecue going on here. Looks like the, the campers have. Uh, Oh, well, there's one. I have been oh, dear. your head. There is no escape. There is no respite. I am your living nightmare. Your bringer of pain and death. I will pull your memories apart. Piece by piece. Until there is only fear and pain. Jeez. He's serious. <laughs> So we're off to Skull Manor and Carnival in the back of the park here, or at least this area. And it certainly looks like the mazes are a walk-on. So we'll quickly give you a review because I'm pretty sure we can't film inside the mazes. Well, we are not allowed to film inside, so we're going to do Skull Manor first. Which actually, sorry, I think we're doing Carnival first. I'm kind of confused. They're both like side by side. This really re reminds me of uh, Kenobi last night. So definitely watch that vlog. <laughs> They're unfortunately not ready. So we're gonna go somewhere else in the park because uh, it's really short on time today. So hopefully the other side, the houses are open. We're gonna go all the way over there and then we'll come back to these houses later. Bobcat done. 
and uh, yeah, impressive. I will say uh, I did spoil myself probably earlier by going on Roarosaurus, which unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's uh, a superior ride to this one. Uh, but the drop on this one's definitely better. Uh, a lot of airtime hills. I built half as much as Roarosaurus, which is shocking. I definitely like the overbanked one leading into the turnaround, and also that head chopper on the second airtime hill just after the drop. That one is probably the highlight for me. Uh, the ride overall just goes by very, very fast. It's speedy, it's smooth, it's a great little ride. It's perfect for this part, but uh, yeah, it definitely needed it. But I'm a little underwhelmed, I will say, because uh, I thought it would be a little bit more intense than it is. But it's a nice fit, it works well here. Great Escape, it's the first ride they've had here for ages. And uh, it's sinuously smooth, there's some nice overbank curves on it. I don't want to take anything away from the ride because it is decent, but yeah, it's just not quite the best from Gravity Group, that's for sure. But I'm glad that I finally got on it, and we'll do a night ride later. All right, time to go to the other side of the park, get some haunts in. We'll see you in a bit. We'll take the Ghost Town shortcut, which is always decent to get up to this section of the park. I don't think there's anything going on in here, but we'll find out. Welcome to Ghost Town. Just finished a ride on Steaming Demon. I don't really know why, because it's pretty rough for an arrow, but it's an arrow, and I definitely want to do as many arrows that still exist whenever I'm in a park as possible, and also a beautiful sunset behind. It actually wasn't too bad of a ride as I kind of tried a non-wheel seat. I'm not gonna do Outlaw, as the line is pretty outlandish, but outside of that, I haven't done any houses, and there's one right next door here, so it's time to do that. Okay, two haunted houses done, very fast, a quick succession. I just got out of Nightmare at Axel Canyon. It was nice to see that building as the coaster has long remo been removed from this park. And I even heard some disturbing rumors about why, and I actually looked that up back in the day, that uh, apparently there was an accident and they had to close it. Turns out that actually wasn't true, or correct me if I'm wrong, and just the internet doesn't have it right. Uh, this one was kind of a bit underwhelming at first because it definitely lacks in sound and the atmospherics in that area, but uh, you have a kind of like a, a typical bayou type of haunt setup leading into it. But then the second half kind of redeems itself. You, kind of, you come back outside into these bloody sheets, a, a maze of bloody sheets that you have to go through, uh, and then you enter this bayou lagoon setup where you get chased down by a gentleman with a chainsaw who's very convincing, I will give him that. Uh, so yeah, definitely, yeah, it was a decent house, but definitely not one of the best. That being said, Hellblock, which I did first, was actually way more impressive, and in fact, it was a great start to the haunt here. Uh, you have a prison that's being taken over by its prisoners, just pure mayhem in there. A lot of cool rooms and animatronics, to be honest with you, a lot of uh, set pieces that lead you into the chaos that is the jail itself. There's an amazing maze of a jail in there too, where you you really have your choice of which direction to go, and it just it doesn't seem like you're actually going to get out. So that was very effective, to be honest. And uh, yeah, just overall, I think the final scene was a little anticlimactic in the control room. The cigar kind of begs for you not to leave. I get it, but uh, I would have expected something a little bit bigger, considering the entire maze was really uh, pretty class. Uh, atmospherics were great, the sound was great. Overall, I'd say that was the best one so far. This is also a scare zone as there are some sinister creatures or figures wandering around these parts.
Okay, we had a quick ride on Canyon Blaster. It was actually probably my best ride on it. Really took that helix with intensity. And now we're going back to the other side of the park to get those other two mazes before finishing out our night. More than likely with a night ride on Bobcat and maybe the Comet if time provides. We've got about a half an hour left. I will say that the music, it would be a lot better atmospheric wise if the music was uh, not music per se and actually haunt related. I know the music that they've chosen or the songs that they've chosen are all Halloween or macabre related, but it doesn't really feel that way. Where the moose statue has been mummified. That's kind of cool. We are in a scare zone, believe it or not. scare actors just got wheelchaired past us as they got injured I guess from the houses that we're about to head to so maybe they are pretty intense uh, let's hope at last we have a bit of atmosphere clearly because of the night and some appropriate music as well okay we're taking a risk it may be stupid we'll see but uh, the staff here doesn't seem very sure of any question that I ask. I'm like, will the line close before 8? What fills up must come down. Six Flags Great Escape will close for the day in 15 minutes. That's why we're hustling for Bobcat Night Ride. I'll see you in a bit. Visual scan! Visual scan! Visual scan! Visual scan! Visual scan! Visual scan! have returned. At last both houses are open. Let's do some carnival. Man, the chainsaw guy got me. I knew he was there from earlier but I didn't think about it on the second round around to do carnival. We're all done. Managed to get those two mazes in and two consecutive rides on Bobcat. So much to cover at the end here uh, including these houses which were both really really good. In fact the uh, Skull Manor I think it's the oldest one here, and it was actually the best. Uh, really classic set pieces, a lot of tropes, but just too much to describe. It was definitely the longest house of them all, and it just kept going. When you talk about clowns, Carnival basically sets that up, but it's interesting in the fact that they had a lot of discarded ride material on the grounds in the back of the uh, building of which Skull Manor is located. So you had some gondolas, a discarded Trabant, and uh, all sorts of other carnivalesque like fixtures and stuff in this kind of like weird valley wooded setup. Lots of really creative lighting. It reminded me of a haunt at home that did that very, very well. Uh, I'd say the lighting was very effective and probably the most effective in there given the carnival theme. Um, the actors were definitely enthusiastic. There was a school bus to go through, uh, a lot of interesting set pieces, and uh, a massive clown's head like at the end that, uh, yeah, if it was an animatronic, would have definitely been far scarier than it was. There could have still been some lighting improvements, as I listened to the comic go by. Unfortunately, I didn't get that in time. Skull Manor, however, what an incredible haunted house. I definitely believe that is the oldest for sure. Um, yeah, you run into all these classic movie uh, or movie haunt characters such as Wolfman, Frankenstein, and then multitude of others who I don't even know who they were. But uh, especially at the end, they were all following me out as I left the house. It was really effective, really cinematic. Wish I could have shot it. There was a ton of rooms. I can't even count how many. I'd say about 15 rooms. 
And uh, it started a little anticlimactic as far as getting inside. There was an introduction, um, like a video that they showed you in a parlor room, an introduction, and then you were off. But uh, yeah, it was really, really good throughout. Um, yeah, you gotta come here. If you're gonna do one maze, it's gonna be Skull Manor in my opinion, and then probably Hell Block after that. Really, really good. Definitely made it worth it, because I was a little worried that it might not be great value at the end, but those last two mazes for sure definitely made it. When it comes to Bobcat and those night rides, I have to say that that is a night coaster. It really ran sensationally, um, especially like that head chopper leading into the mist. Like the Halloween effects definitely helped it. And uh, yeah, it was just running perfectly. And the airtime on that second or that first and second airtime hill, yeah, just wow, like amazing. It certainly redeemed itself in my book with those rides because yeah, it, I don't know, it was just, for some reason, the night made the difference for me on that one. Uh, still not the most intense ride in the world. It's super smooth, and but there's a lot of floater air time on it. And uh, really, it's just an overall generally pleasing quick wood coaster and an excellent addition, as I said, to this park. All right, we're all done. Uh, time to get out. They want us out. The monsters got to get their rest or at least get their meals in. And uh, yeah, that's it for Great Escape here. So we'll see you on the other side of the game. back where we all started here it feels like a whole days ago but it was only three and a bit hours managed to comprehensively get the day done just to time very happy about that and a very decent day uh, one little uh, stickling point is that uh, one of the mazes that being the carnival or carnival maze wasn't open until sometime after six that left it with like just over or a little under two hours of operation for the evening which uh, if you're paying for this event you really kind of want the mazes all to be running when there's only four of them uh, but that's besides the point still managed to get on to or get through that maze anyway um, but pretty decent event small for a Six Flags Fright Fest but a decent one nonetheless. They've definitely put some care and TLC into the houses in this one uh, to give people some incentive to come the ways they have to to come down to enjoy this particular event. Um, I'm certainly glad that I did. Uh, would I say it's one of the best Six Flags ones that I've done? Certainly not. Unfortunately, I've now done almost all of them, or fortunately I've done almost all of them, uh, and uh, some of them are just way more atmospheric I'd compare this probably to Darien Lakes, even though that one has only three houses. But we have a similar size park uh, that has a similar sort of offering as far as their Fright Fest is concerned. The atmosphere at that one is far superior than this one, so they could definitely work on the scare zones and the overall theme, uh, feel and atmospherics of the event itself. Bobcat was a great little ride. Definitely a night ride, as I said. So if you have the chance, definitely try to get that. And otherwise, or try to get it during Halloween, which had a very good effect. I have like a pumpkin face going on here. Perfect where, uh, to go with a steam and demon behind me. My face matches the track. So that's kind of funny. I guess I'll just end on that now. All right, guys. Thanks for dropping in. Six Flags Great Escape. Who knows when we'll be back next. I'm